He plays one of the most iconic bass lines in rock and roll history. But Philip Taylor Kramer is not your typical headbanger. Far from it. He transforms from rock star to rocket scientist. It is definitely not your average rock star trajectory. And then one day in 1995, Kramer vanishes, leaving family, friends, and fans searching for answers. There are a lot of sinister components to Philip Taylor Kramer's story. There are a lot of things about his story that don't add up. In the 1960s, Iron Butterfly becomes heavy metal royalty with the timeless classic In Agada de Vida. But the band fails to capitalize on their early success. And in 1974, they bring on a 23-year-old bass player, Philip Taylor Kramer, to change things up. He was six foot five, tall, blonde, good looking, by every description, a ladies' man. He did a thousand sit-ups a day. He was somebody who could potentially breathe new life into the band. Taylor had been wanting to be a rock star for a really long time, and it was really, really exciting for him. Kramer contributes to two new albums, but it's obvious that their bassist marches to the beat of a different drummer. Philip Taylor Kramer was a rock and roller with a brain. I mean, he knew physics, he knew computers. He was the son of an electrical engineering professor at Youngstown State University. He was obsessed with math and science. While he was still an Iron Butterfly, he started going to night school and studied electrical engineering and aerospace engineering. I bet being on stage and playing was a release for him, but I bet it was never truly a career for him. When Iron Butterfly breaks up again in 1977, Kramer never looks back. He cut his hair. He didn't really tell people that he was in Iron Butterfly. His first job after Iron Butterfly was with Northrop, a weapons manufacturer, and he worked on the MX missile guidance system. I can't say this about most rock musicians, but Philip Taylor Kramer actually became a rocket scientist. Taylor was married, he had two kids, he had a job and a company that he really enjoyed working at. Things were, you know, seemed really good. Taylor's father, Ray, was hired by Total Multimedia as a scientist in residence. So he was working right along with his son. There was always this idea in the background that Taylor and his father were working on something that was much bigger. But no one can guess just how much bigger. I think Taylor believed that he had discovered the secret to teleportation, a way to transfer matter through space and time faster than the speed of light. He was working on some stuff that people in very high places, smart people, wanted so much so that uh, he called his dad one day. And he said, Dad, if I ever call you and say, I'm going to kill myself, it's a lie. Just know that it will be a lie, and I'm going to need your help. And then he vanished. He was gone. Hello? Was he coerced? Was he being abducted? Was he literally at the end of his rope? There's a lot of speculation on whether his disappearance was an accident, was suicide, or murder. Music's Greatest Mysteries, all new Wednesday, 8, 7 central on Access TV.